Sino ang ready na to receive the word of God ngayong araw na ito? Amen. Week 4 mga kapatid. <laughs> may excited dito sa kaliwa. Amen. Week 4 mga kapatid. Amen. Kung kayo po ay may Bible, buksan po natin sa 1 Samuel chapter 15. This is not so familiar story, so bear with me as I establish this to get to my point. Sabi ng 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 1, One day, Samuel said to Saul, It was the Lord who told me to anoint you as king of his people, Israel. Now listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies has declared. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek for opposing Israel when they came from Egypt. Now, verse 3, go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite. I will repeat it again because this is very important sa ating pag-aaralan ngayon. So bear this in mind. Now, verse 3, now go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite, men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. So they go ahead, they destroy the Amalekite, pero may naging problema. Tanong tayo sa verse 9. Ang sabi ng verse 9, Saul and his men spared Agag's life. Si Agag po ang king ng Amalekites. They spared Agag's life and kept the best of the sheep and goats, cattle and fat calves and the lambs. Wait, hold on. Ang utos sa kanila is to completely destroy the Amalekite nation. Wala kayong ititira. Pero ang sabi ng verse 9, hindi nila pinatay yung hari. At nagtira pa sila ng mga sheep, ng goats, ng cattle, mga pinatay, pinatabangguya, and even lambs. Everything, in fact, that appealed, appealed to them. They destroyed only what was worthless or poor or, or of poor quality. At least what they think is poor. Verse 10, Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm sorry that I ever made so king, for he has not been loyal to me and has refused to obey my command. Samuel was so deeply moved when he heard this that he cried out to the Lord all night. Have you been there? Yung umiiyak kayo buong araw? Buong gabi? I've been there. Verse 12, Early the next morning, Samuel went to find Saul. Someone told him Saul went to the town to, uh, of Carmel to set up a monument to himself. Wow. Then he went on to Gilgal. Verse 13, when Samuel finally found him, take note of this, may kasalanan si Saul. Hinanap siya ni Samuel. But look at this, Saul greeted him cheerfully as if walang nangyari. Or at least he's innocent. He thinks he's innocent. May the Lord bless you and I have carried out the Lord's command. He's proudly saying, ginawa ko ang pinapagawa ng Panginoon. Ang utos ng Panginoon is to completely destroy the Amalek as well. Mission accomplished. I've done it all. Verse 14, ang sabi dito, Then, what is all the bleating of sheep and goats and lowing of cattle I hear? In other words, ang sabi ni Saul, completely dinestroy ko silang lahat. Ang sabi ni Samuel, eh, ba't may naririnig akong bleating? Eh, meh, meh. Ba't may naririnig akong kambing? Ba't may naririnig akong tupa? In other words, hindi mo sinunod ang Panginoon. Kasi kung sinunod mo ang Panginoon, wala dapat ako naririnig na, meh, meh, meh. What is all this bleating of the sheep? Asabi ni Saul, well, well, it's true, verse 15, it's true that the army spared the best of the sheep, goats and camels, Saul admitted, but they are going to sacrifice them to the Lord your God. Excuses, excuses, excuses. We have destroyed everything else, verse 16, then Samuel said to Saul, shut up, seven translation, stop, listen to what the Lord has told me last night. Sabi ni Saul, so, what did he tell you? Well, Samuel told him, although you may think little of yourself, are you not the leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king of Israel. 18, and the Lord sent you on a mission and told you, go and completely destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, until they are dead. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? But I, I, but, but I did obey the Lord, Saul insisted. I carried out the mission he gave me. I brought back King Agag, but I destroyed everyone else. And then my troops, now nagtuturo na siya. And then my troops brought in the best of the sheep, goats, cattle, and plunder to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices? 
or your obedience to His voice. Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. And submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Rebellion, verse 23, rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft. Kaya mga rebelde mukhang makukulam din eh. Because rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, this is huge, this is huge. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, He has rejected you as king. Take note of this kasi ito pong verse na ito ang, ang nagpapatunay, this was the start of the fall of soul. Dito po nag-start na mawala ang anointing ng Panginoon sa, sa existing king na ang pangalan ay soul. I want to talk to you about on this subject, stuck at a green light. Stuck at the green light. Tignan nyo nga po yung katabi nyo, sabi mo sa kanya, you might be stuck at a green light. Kung kayo po mga kapatid ay nagda-drive sa Metro Manila at ako po ay nagda-drive sa Metro Manila, one thing I have concluded is that driving in Metro Manila is quite a challenge. Traffic is impossible. May sasakyan ka man o wala, ramdam mo kung ano ang traffic na meron sa Metro Manila. At kaya tayo frustrated sa traffic kasi kaya ka nga bumili ng sasakyan para igalaw ka from one place to the other Tapos ang mahal-mahal ng sasakyan mo hindi makagalaw because of traffic. And based on my experience, wala po akong problemang huminto kapag red light. Because you are supposed to stop at red light. Yung iba sa inyo, yun lang po ang revelation na kailangan pwede na umuwi. Sabi mo sa katami mo, pag nakastop, mag-stop. You are supposed to stop at red light. Pero alam niyo kung ano yung mas frustrating? Yung kapag ikaw ay nagda-drive, o kaya nakasakay ka sa sasakyan, at yung nasa unahan mo, nag-green na yung light, hindi siya umaandar. At pag hindi umaandar yung nasa unahan mong sasakyan, dahil kristyano ka, so gagawin mo politely, politely bubusinahin mo siya, pit, polite lang. Pit. Just to remind him that you should be going. You should be moving forward. It is a green light already, isn't it? Pero pag ilang segundo na lumilipas, hindi pa rin siya umaandar, yung polite na busina nagiging pit, pit. At habang pahaba ng pahaba, pit! Kumakaway ka na, hey, move forward! At, at, at least kung nakikita ka niya, pit! At ang pinaka-frustrating, pag yung green naging red uli. And you were not able to move. It's frustrating, isn't it? That you're supposed to be moving and you're not moving at all. Alam niyo mga kapatid, kung frustrating ito sa traffic, yung principle na ito ay mas frustrating kay Prophet Samuel. Kasi si Prophet Samuel is in a very difficult situation about King Saul. Background story lang, itong si King Saul, mga kapatid, ang kauna-una ang hari ng Israel. Sa kanya nagsimula yung so-called monarchy government kung saan ang mga Israelites ay humingi ng hari sa Panginoon. Hindi sila pinapangunahan ng hari before. But because nainggit sila sa ibang nation, sabi nila, gusto rin namin magkaroon ng sarili naming hari. And God didn't like that. Ayaw ng Diyos na magkaroon sila ng hari sapagat yung service na binibigay ng hari na ibibigay naman ng Diyos. Kaya sabi ng Lord, ba't ka pa kailangan nyo ng hari? I am your king. Ba't ka pa kailangan ng hari? But because of God's goodness and God's mercy, binigay pa rin ng Panginoon at ang kauna-una ang king nga ng Israel is si King Saul. At alam nyo kung sino nag-anoint kay King Saul? Ang nag-anoint kay King Saul, si Prophet Samuel. Ano yung maganda yung karir ni, ni King Saul because he reigned for 23 years as a king. As sa kanyang pagahari mga kapatid, napakarami niyang military victories. Marami silang na-conquer. Yung, yung, yung separate tribes ng Israel na pag-unite ni King Saul. He had a great, great accomplishment sa kanyang karir. But although sa later part ng kanyang journey, si Saul po ay na-engage into series of disobedience. I said it again. I said it again in case you missed. Maganda ang takbo ng kanyang karir hanggang later on na-engage siya sa series of disobedience. Nagsimula siyang sumuway sa Diyos na naglagay sa kanya sa posisyon. Ginagawa ni Saul yung hindi niya dapat ginagawa at yung hindi niya dapat ginagawa, yun yung kanyang ginagawa. Kaya nga sa 1 Samuel chapter 50, sa pamamagitan ni Prophet Samuel, his obedience was tested again. Ang sabi ng Panginoon kay Saul, kailangan yung completely lupigin Sirain, wasakin at patayin 
ang buong nation ng Amalekites. At very detail ang Panginoon. Sabi niya, dapat lahat ng lalaki, lahat ng babae, lahat ng bata, babies, cattle, yun natutulog sa preaching. Joke, 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 joke. Lahat ng sheep, lahat ng goats, lahat ng camel, lahat ng donkeys, lahat sila ay patayin ninyo. Wow! Before we continue, maybe you were asking, hindi ba masyadong brutal yan, Pastor? Hindi ba masyadong brutal na ang Diyos na mapagmahal would order something like this one? Why would a loving God order this kind of killing? This is extrajudicial killing, Pastor. This is EJK. This is not right. But you know what? I believe with all my heart, if you read the whole context, that this is just a just condition. Uh, should I say just command? Ako naniniwala ito'y makatarungan sapagkat ang main purpose ng ating Panginoon is to save the whole nation of Israel. That's His sole purpose. Na iligtas ang buong nation ng Israel. You don't understand me. Let's say for example, ikaw ay na-diagnose na may cancer. Hindi ko sinasabi, pero supposing na, na meron ka kamag-anak, meron ka kakilala, kaibigan, o ikaw mismo ay na-diagnose na may cancer. At nung lumapit ka sa doktor, ang sabi ng doktor sa iyo, sorry sir, pero meron pong cancer na namumuo sa inyo. Pero huwag kayong manggalala. Stage negative 5 pa. Kaya pang abu- uh, habulin to. Negative pa eh. Actually, yung cancer cells, pas- uh, uh, yung cancer cells sa'yo, nasa kuko pa lang kasi cancer sa kuko lang to. So, 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 nasa paa pa lang. Pero kapag pinutol mo yung paa mo, mapipigilan pa. So, so, can you imagine the bargain? May cancer ka, you could, be, you could die, pero kapag pinutol mo yung paa mo, pwede ka pa mabuhay. Pwede mo ba sabihin sa doktor na, anong klaseng doktor ka? Bakit mo sasabihin putulin ko ang ang aking paa? Sa kanag-aral, ipapasara ko. Hindi tama yan. Hindi mo pwede sabihin, right? Because ang purpose lang ng doktor is to save your life. And sometimes to save your life means to putol your leg. Am I making sense, isn't it? And I believe this is the same scenario here. That our God is just doing what is necessary to save the entire nation of Israel. Ang order you completely destroy the Amalekites. Wala kayo titira kahit ano. But obviously, as we read the story, nakita natin that Saul disobeyed God. Or should I say, Saul blatantly disobeyed God. Amen? Hindi niya pinatal, pinatay si King Agag at may mga sheep and cattle na hindi nila pinatay kasi yun yung tingin nila, yung pinatay lang nila, yung tingin nilang kailangan patayin. Obviously, they disobeyed our God. Nalaman ni Samuel ito. Nalaman na ating sinabi ng Panginoon kay Samuel, si Saul ay nagdisobey na naman. Kaya ang ginawa ni Samuel, kinausap niya itong si Saul nung nagkita yung propeta at yung hari. Look at this. Ang sabi ng verse na binasa natin kanina, we welcome pa cheerfully. Hallelujah. We welcome pa cheerfully ni King Saul itong si Prophet Samuel at sabi niya, the Lord bless you. God bless. Alam niyo, hindi lahat ng nag-God bless sa inyo. Amen? ay totoong nag-God bless. Hindi lahat ng nag-God bless sa inyo, kapatid. Hindi porke sinabihan ka ng God bless you ay, ma- ma- ay-, ay hindi maganda, ay-, ay tama ang kanyang motibo. Amen? May mga nag-God bless you sa iyo na hindi talaga totoo. Sabi niyo nga po sa katabi mo, God bless you. <laughs> sabi ni Saul, may the Lord bless you at ang, at ang kanyang report, ay, sabi ng, ang kanyang report, I have carried out the Lord's command. In other words, ginawa ko ang pinapagawa ng ating Panginoon. Pero ang sabi ni Prophet Samuel, Teka lang, kung ginawa mo ang pinapagawa ng Panginoon, bakit nakakarinig ako ng meh? Ba't nakakarinig ako ng bleating of the ship? Obviously, you disobeyed God. Hindi, sabi ni Saul, no. I carried out the mission that God has gave me, uh, given me. Ginawa ko ang mission ko. Eh, although, ang sabi ni uh, although si King Agag, hindi ko muna pinatay. Although may mga ship na hindi muna namin pinatay, but I killed everyone. Hindi pa ba sa pension, in essence? Then, sabi ni Prophet Samuel sa kanya, ano bang tingin mong mas mahalaga? Kasi sabi ni Saul, eh, yung mga hayop naman na yan, iaalay din naman natin sa Panginoon yan. Nag-excuse na siya. At sabi ni, ni Prophet Samuel sa kanya, teka lang, ano ba mas mahalaga? Yung offering at sacrifice mo o yung pagsunod mo? Makinig ka ha? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Ang sabi ni Prophet Samuel sa kanya, kailangan maalala mo ito. That obedience is better than sacrifice. At since hindi ka sumunod, since you, you rejected God as your king, now ang sabi ng Bible, He, the Lord, rejected you as a king. Wow. Must be a nightmare sa buhay ni King Saul. He reigned for more than 20 years. And then all of a sudden, because of this mistake, 
Amen? Tinanggalan siya ng anointing, tinanggalan siya ng authority. God regretted, ang sabi pa nga ng ibang ng succeeding verses, pinagsisihan ng Diyos na ginawa niyang hari si Saul. I don't know about you mga kapatid, pero ayoko pag, pagdating ko sa langit, sasabihin ng Lord, actually pinagsisihan kong ginawa kitang pastor. Actually pinagsisihan ko na ikaw ay naging kristyano. Ayaw natin mangyari na sasabihin ng Panginoon sa atin, pinagsisihan niya na tayo ay nagpagamit sa ating Panginoon. Right? Amen. Am I making sense? Alam niyo, ang mas interesting dito, nung tinanggal ang anointing kay Saul, ang mas apektado pa si Prophet Samuel. Kasi uh, sabi ng succeeding verses, oo nang hinayang ang Panginoon na si Saul ay naging hari, pero si Prophet Samuel hindi makatulog gabi-gabi because nagluluksa siya, amen, sa pagkawala ng anointing at authority ni Saul. Sa last part ng verse, mga kapatid, ang sabi ng scripture, he, uh, Samuel mourned constantly. Bakit nga ba, Pastor, parang si Prophet Samuel pa affected? Maybe because siya ang nag-anoint kay Saul. Maybe because they were friends with each other. Maybe because gusto niya, Lord, baka magbago pa isip mo. Baka gusto mong pang ibalik uli at i-restore ang authority sa kanya. At naglulok sa siya. Gabi-gabi. He was crying all night kasi gusto niyang mabalik ang authority kay King Saul. Pero ang interesting, pagdating ng chapter 16, na pagkatapos ng chapter 15, ulitin ko lang, recap ko lang, sa last part ng chapter 15, naglulok sa si Prophet Samuel dahil nawala ang authority kay Saul. Pero tingnan niyo kung paano nagsimula ang chapter 16. Ang sabi ng chapter 16 verse 1, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel, fill your horn with oil, and 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 green light go i am sending you to jesse the bethlehemite for i have look at this i have provided myself a king among the sons of jesse in other words punuin mo na at lagyan mo na yung lalagyan mo ng anointing at ng oil dahil meron nang nakalaang bagong hari na papalit kay saul that's interesting isn't it ang sabi ng lord kay samuel how long will you mourn Hanggang, alam niyo, chinay ko ibig sabihin ng morn, hindi siya good morning. Yung morn na naglulok sa rito. Kasi, kasi chinay ko sa, sa Hebrew word, ang ibig sabihin ng morn dito is talagang dead, dead morning. In other words, yung naglulok sa ka sa patay. Yung Jewish morning, kung saan naglalagay sila ng abo sa kanilang ulo, nagsusuot sila ng sako at nakadapa sila sa sahig. Kaya nung sinasabi ng Panginoon to, habang nakadapa siguro si Prophet Samuel, how long will you mourn? Hindi mo ba alam, I rejected Saul already. Tumayo ka nga dyan and go ahead. Lagyan mo ng langis ang lalagyan mo sapagkat meron na akong bagong hari na itinalaga. Hanggang kailang ka magluluksa? I have rejected this king. I have regretted na siya'y naging hari. But I have selected a new king. Look at this. Nagluluksa si Samuel patungkol kay Saul, pero hindi niya na-realize may bagong king na inilaan ng ating Panginoon. Naglulok sa, si, naglulok sa si Prophet Samuel kay Saul na nakaraan. Na hindi niya na-realize na may bagong future na inilaan ng Panginoon sa kanya. Samuel was mourning about what was and didn't realize what lies ahead. In case bumagsakay sa Sunday school, in case hindi nyo binabasa yung Bible nyo at bumagsakay sa Sunday school, David has done much better than so in case you, you failed sa Sunday school. Pero ang sinasabi ng Panginoon dito na bakit ka nagluluksa? Hindi pa ba sapat yung sinabi ko na I have rejected Saul? Bakit ka may mga sako-sako pa dyan? Bakit ka, naka, bakit ka nagluluksa hindi naman patay? Si Saul. Why are you mourning for the past? You didn't realize na mayroong bagong future. Na may mas maganda akong nilaan para sa inyo. Siguro ang concern, siguro, siguro ang concern ni Prophet Samuel, hindi naman siguro dahil sa close lang sila o siya ang nag-anoint, mababaw naman kasi. No? Kasi posible rin na kaya nag-mourn at naglulok sa si Samuel, pwedeng iniisip niya, teka lang, pag si Saul nawala bilang hari, mababakante yung posisyon. Paano na ang aming bansa? Maybe he was afraid na walang tatayong hari. Pero tingnan mo, natatakot pa lang siya. May inihanda na ang Panginoon. Hinuhuli pa lang ng disciples, iniihaw na ng ating Panginoon. 
Kaya lang kailangan nating magtiwala mga kapatid na sinasabi ng Panginoon, hanggang kailan ka magluluksa sa nakaraan? Meron na akong bagong bagay na inilaan para sa iyo. Tignan mo yung traffic light, oh, naka-green na. Bakit hindi ka pa umaabante? The, 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 the traffic light is green, but Samuel was stuck at the green light. He was supposed to be moving, and he's not moving at all. Why is it a big deal, Pastor? Bakit masyadong big deal? Look at this. This is a big deal. You know why? This is a big deal. You know why? Because David cannot reign if Samuel will not stop mourning for Saul. Bakit siya big deal? Kasi hindi magsisimula ang pagahari ni David hanggat iniiyakan niya yung haring favorite niya. Uh, i- hindi mo mararanasan yung future hanggat iniiyakan mo ang nakaraan. Hallelujah. And what God has in your life cannot begin until you stop complaining, until you stop crying, until you stop stacking <laughs> at the green light. Now, this is a prophecy for some of you all. Take care, huh? This is the prophecy. Move on. Move on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. It's not yet finished. Move on. The light is green. The traffic light is green. And maybe you're mourning and maybe you were crying and complaining and cannot move on because you're afraid. Ano na mangyayari sa aming pamilya? Ano mangyayari sa aking karir? Ano na mangyayari sa aking, sa, aking, sa aking journey as a Christian? But you know what? One thing I realized, as I've said, mga kapatid, God always has a better plan for each one of us. That His ways are higher than our ways. That His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. That God is always in control. Hindi pinagpapawisan ang Panginoon sa nervyos. Hindi siya nagkakaroon ng panic attack because God has prepared something new for you. All things have passed away. And behold, the new has come. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, hinto mo na yan. So was not dead. How long will you stop mourning? Hanggang kailan mo pagluluksaan ng nakaraan? Move on. I provided myself a new king. Teka lang, teka lang, teka lang. Di ba si Prophet Samuel, Prophet? Nasa pangalan niya eh, Prophet Samuel. He was a prophet, isn't it? Teka lang, di ba trabaho ng Prophet i-discern? Di ba ang trabaho ng propeta, i-discern ang kalooban ng Panginoon? Bakit para yatang nahuhuli si Samuel na kailangan pa siyang paalalahanan ng Panginoon? Ba't ka pa nagluloksa? Dapat alam mo, propeta ka. Wala na sa kanyang anointing ha. I already rejected soul. How long will you mourn? It's interesting, isn't it? As a prophet, dapat alam niya na wala na kay soul ang anointing. Pero bakit parang outdated yata si Prophet Samuel? You know, I have a theory. Maybe, just maybe, maybe kaya hindi niya madiscern kasi gustong gusto niya si King Saul. Watch this, watch this. Minsan kasi yung gust, pag, pag gustong gusto mo yung isang tao, pag gustong gusto mo yung ibang isang bagay, pag gustong gusto mo makapasok sa tarap, pag gustong gusto mo mag-abroad, minsan yung discernment mo hindi malinaw. Look at this. This is the phrase. Post it on Facebook. Your desire blinds your dis- discernment. Binubulag ng desire mo yung discernment mo. How long will you mourn? Hindi ka ba na-inform? Hindi ka ba nakatanggap ng memo? I have rejected soul. It's not my will. na restore pa siya sa throne. I have a new plan. It's not my will anymore. Why are you crying? Bakit, bakit hanggang ngayon umiiyak ka pa rin na hindi ka natuloy sa pag-abroad? Move on. Ba't hanggang ngayon iniiyak ka mo pa rin na binastig ka? Move on. Bakit hanggang ngayon sinasayang mo kung hindi na yan? Sampalin mo ngayon katabi mo, mahina lang. Sabi mo sa kanya, nireject na yan ang Panginoon. Sampalin mo uli na mahina lang. It's not God's will. Gisingin mo lang. In case... In case masyado pa rin siyang in love sa hindi kalooban ng Panginoon, kailangan niyang... No, no, no. It's not love life. It's not love life. Don't get excited. It's not love life, right? It's not just love life I'm talking about. 
I'm talking about the principle in life. Yes. Na maybe masyado ka nag enjoy sa hindi kalooban ng Diyos, kaya yung kalooban ng Diyos hindi mo madiscern. Yes. Tapos pag pinagpatuloy mo yan, sisisihin mo si Lord sa dulo. Yes. Tapos sasabihin mo, ah, 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 bakit kaya nag struggle ako? You're struggling because you are outside the will of God. Yes. People are not respecting you because you're outside the will of God. Yes. Your heart is broken because you're outside the will of God. Is it possible, mga kapatid? Is it possible? Is it a possibility, mga kapatid, na ang mga nangyayari sa atin is a, a soft nudge, a soft push, and a soft reminder. It's not my will. I have a new plan. So, may tatlong nag-amen, okay na sila ron. So, yung mga hindi nag-amen, para sa inyo itong next statement. Kasi sinabi ko kanina, maaari, wala nang chance, na maaari mga kapatid, na yan ay konting tulak at paalala ng Panginoon. It's not my will. Konti lang nag-amen doon, tatlo lang. Ito, yung mga hindi nag-amen para sa inyo to. Kasi ang argument na maraming kristyano, lalo sa ibang bansa, hindi dito to, sa ibang bansa. Masaya naman ako, pastor eh, kalooban to ng Diyos. Nakabili akong kotse, kalooban ng Diyos to. Nakabili ako ng bagong bahay, kalooban ng Diyos to. May natipuhan ka sa church. Type ko to ah. Lumapit ka. Miss, miss, miss. Pinagpe-pray kita. Shhh. Shhh. Type kita. Alam ko ikaw ang kalooban ng Diyos para sa akin. Shhh. Nangusap ang Diyos. Wala ka na magagawa dito eh. Nangusap ang Diyos na ikaw ang babae para sa akin. Ang sabi ng babae, ba't sa'yo lang nangusap? <laughs> no, 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 no kidding. I mean, dahil type mo, dahil gusto mo, ibig ba sabihin yun ang will ng Diyos? Dahil gusto mo lang makalabas ng bansa? Dahil gusto mo mag-abroad? I'm not against abroading. Alam nyo naman yan, abroading. Alam nyo yan. I'm not against. Ang dami nga sa inyo, pinag abroad ko pa. Kung kalooban ng Panginoon, go ahead. Pero hindi yan katiyakan na magsasaksig ka. Hindi lahat na nag abroad nagsasaksig. But what I'm saying is this, mga kapatid. Na, so, ibig sabihin, dahil gusto mo ko, kalooban na ng Diyos, no? Because your desire is, most of the time, it's not God's desire. That your will doesn't equate to God's will. God's will is not always your will. Even Jesus Christ said, it's not my will, but yours be done. Kung desire lang ang pag-uusapan, gusto ni Lord, wag na ituloy. But it's not my will, but yours be done. Ayoko dun trabaho na to, but it's not my will, but yours be done. Ayoko dun tumira malapit sa monumento, but it's not your will, but yours be done. Ayoko actually dito sa Jia Kamanaba, but it's not my will. But yours be done. Kasi minsan, pag ang desire masyadong malakas, ang discernment lumalabo. Hindi makadiscern ang maraming Christian minsan kasi gusto ko to eh. Eh kasi pastor, ba't hindi na lang magsalita ang Panginoon sa akin para sakto na yung sigawan ako, Hoy! Gising! Ba't naglulugsa ka pa? Move on! Di ba mas madali? Ang katwiran na iba mas madali, pastor. Pero, kung naikinig kayo sa akin for quite some time, Lagi ko rin sinasabi, hindi porki nagsasalita ang Diyos, pinapakinggan ng tao. Yeah. Tingnan mo si Adan, nagsalita ang Diyos, nagtago. Yeah. Si Moses, nung nakausap ang Diyos, nakipagdebate sa Diyos. Yeah. Si Gideon, nung kinausap ng Diyos, nakipag-argue at nakipag-bargain sa Diyos. Si Jonah, nung kinausap, tinakbuhan ng Diyos. Yeah. Hindi porki nakausap ng Diyos. E naniniwala ang isang tao. Yeah. It's not God's will. And you know it. But the problem is that, you know it's God's will, and you're still mourning. How long will you stop mourning? You know it's God's will, but you can't move on. Alam mong mali, pero tinutuloy mo pa rin. You don't understand, Pastor. Ingat ka sa pagsasalita mo. You don't understand what you're talking about. Watch your mouth, Pastor. Wash your mouth. Wash your mouth. 
Pastor, FYI, it's not easy to make it right. Understand me. Yes. Naintindihan ka nga ng Diyos eh. Kaya nga ang tanong niya, how long? Hindi ka naman binabawalang magloksa eh. How long? God is encouraging you. I am gracious. But you have to make it right. You have to decide to make it right. Pastor, actually, lately, pinag-iisipan ko yan. Kasi married na kami ng asawa ko, pero feeling ko hindi siya ang kalooban ng Diyos para sa akin. 20 years na kaming kasal, tatlo na ang anak namin, pero feeling ko ini-impress ng Diyos na hiwalayan ko siya at yun ang kalooban ng Diyos. Pastor, ano kaya ang kalooban ng Diyos? Maghihiwalay ba kami? Alam niyo, isa yun sa pinakamahirap sagutin na tanong. Kasi parang ako pa magdidikta sa future ng mga anak mo. Cargo di konsensya ko pa pagka nagka-litsi-litsi ang mga buhay natin dyan. Right? Now, I cannot answer that, but I can answer it in this, in this manner because I've been receiving a lot of questions with, with that same subject. And I think, kung ikaw ay kasal na, it's God's will for you to stay married. That's God's will eh. To stay married. Now, I'm not saying na kapag nanatili kayong kasal, eh magiging maayos kagad. But if you want that marriage to work, you have to start to make good decisions. And allow God to be the center of it to make it work. Do you agree? Obviously, there are consequences, but we have to start making good choices. Amen? In order for these things to make it right. Don't be afraid to make things right. How long will you stop mourning? I have rejected this. Go. Fill your flask with oil. Go to Bethlehem. Go to Jesse. Because I have prepared myself a new king. Is this helping anybody? Is this helping anybody? Is this helping anybody? I know I'm helping somebody. I'm, I know I'm preaching to somebody, mga kapatid. I mean, I mean because sometimes, no, we want to make things right. We want to experience Zoe life. We want to experience an abundant life. But you have to, to, you have to make great decisions every single day to make it happen. Kung, kung, kung buong taon mula January hanggang December, wala kang ginawa kundi magkakain ng magkakain. You love eating and we love eating, right? Huwag mo lang kainin yung braso ng katabi mo, ha? Alam ko, gugtong ka na eh. Do you understand my point, mga kapatid? Kapag ka mula January hanggang December, wala ka nang ginawa kundi kumain, and wala ka nang ginawa kundi pabayaan ang buhay mo, pabayaan ang sarili mo, and all of that. Pagdating ng December, eh, lalo ngayon magpapasko pa, no? Pagdating ng December 31, yung timbang mo nadagdagan ng 20 kilos. Grabe yun. Mga limang taon yun. Na pag humingi ka ba ng tawad sa Panginoon, papatawarin ka niya. Come on, come on. Kapag humingi ka ba ng tawad sa Panginoon, sinabi, Lord, Patawarin mo ako sa kasalanan ng gluto ni. Papatawarin ka ba ng Panginoon? Yes, obviously. Pero hindi porke pinatawad ka ng Diyos sa kasalanan mo ngayon, bukas, pagising mo, may abs ka na. Doesn't work that way. Natulog kang 90 kilos, pagising mo, may abs ka. Bakit? Pinatawad ka na ba ng Diyos? Yes. But you have to start to make good decisions para dalhin ka ng Panginoon into God's will. Hindi sa lahat ng, pangin, ng panahon, lahat ng hindi magagandang nangyayari sa buhay natin, kailangan isisi natin sa jablo. Yung jablo nga, gusto na mag-born again din. Gusto na mag-member sa Jia Kamanaba tuloy. Kasi lagi na lang daw siya ang sinisisi natin. O kaya naman sinisisi natin ng Diyos. Pero wake up call lang ha. Wake up call. Literally, yung mga tulog na wake up call to. <laughs> Tsaka para sa dumadaan sa ganitong struggle, ito ang wake up call. Look at this verse. Proverbs 19 th- verse 3. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness. And then they are angry at the Lord. <laughs> Sinira mo buhay mo dahil sa iyong kahangalan, tapos ngayon magagalit ka sa Diyos. Yung sinasabi, hindi ako nagsabi nito ha. Huwag niyo ko sisihin. Pastor, nananakit ka. Hindi ako nananakit. Yung nakalagay sa Bible eh. Kaya sa tanong ng Lord, how long? God rejected it. God is not for it. It's not the will of God for you to experience it or to live in this sin. God wants you to have a soul life. Yung abundant life that your past cannot threaten you, 
Yung abundant life that your past doesn't mix, uh, doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. Alam yung Zoe life that mercy will keep you and cover you. Y yung Zoe life that your past cannot destroy you. Alam nyo yung Zoe life that your yesterday cannot destroy your tomorrow. That kind of life that God wants to give to you. I rejected soul. How long will you mourn? Ang next instruction ng Panginoon sa kanya, sabi ng, ng verse 1 in chapter 6, ang next instruction, fill your flask, your vessel, with oil. Punuin mo, lagyan mo, yung lalagyan mo ng langis, olive oil, specific sa ibang translation, because yung oil na yun ay para sa pag-anoint. Ang sabi ng Lord, punuin mo, yung lalagyanan mo ng langis. Now the question is this, bakit niya kailangan lagyan ng langis? Ah, kasi pastor, iaanoint niya na si King David. Yes and no. Yes, iaapoint niya si King David, pero an ako naniniwala, kaya silabi ng Lord, nalagyan mo ng langis, kasi walang laman. <laughs> Grabe yun. Yung iba nga nagtataka pa rin. What just happened? Nakatulog ba ako or what? No, no, no. Kaya sinabi ng Lord na lagyan ng langis yung flask, yung lalagyan, kasi walang laman. A prophet should always have that oil. Pero ba't walang laman? Something is wrong. Kaya sabi ng Lord, lagi mo ng laman yan. That's your purpose. It's time to make things right. It's time. I say this humbly. I don't judge or condemn anyone. I believe God is talking to all of us. It's time. To, it's time for you to have a fruitful and better life. God wants our church to be fruitful. God wants your life to be fruitful. And fruitfulness is not a suggestion. Hindi sinabi ng Panginoon, go bear fruit. Suggest ko lang ha. No? Fruitfulness is a command. God is so serious in checking the fruits in our life. The evidence of your salvation. The goodness of God in your life. If people are looking for evidence, God is looking for the fruit. He's looking for the fruit. Naalala niyo yung, yung, yung fig tree, letter F in DP, fig tree, F in DP. Fig, F, not P. Ano active sana kayo, slow lang kayo. <laughs> yung nakita ni Jesus yung fig tree na walang fruit, remember that? Na ako talaga, awang-awa ako, every time ipipitch ko, awang-awa ako sa fig tree, nasumpa pa eh. Sinusumpa kita, hindi ka na magkakabunga. Sabi ng fig tree, what? Yung Pharisee hindi kinurse, si Judas hindi kinurse, si Peter hindi kinurse, tapos ako na nanahimik kinurse. Why is it? Because ang fig tree, pag may, pag may dahon, automatic may bunga. So yung fig tree na to, may dahon, pero walang bunga. Jesus was expecting a fruit because you're supposed to have the fruit. That's why God hates it because you're supposed to have a fruit and you don't have fruit. You appear to have fruit, but you don't have fruit. You have the appearance, but you don't have the fruit. May krus kayo sa simbahan ninyo, pero wala kayong fruit. May church building kayo, pero wala kayong fruit. I know I'm talking to somebody. May multiple services kayo, pero wala kayong fruit. Why? Because God is looking for the fruit. Ang, a, 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 ang problema ng maraming churches, possibly kasama tayo, no? Sometimes, churches nowadays, we are more concerned about our appearance rather than the fruit. We are concerned about this light and no. Alam nyo kung bakit stuck tayo at a green light? Because we are more concerned about our appearance rather than our fruitfulness. Pag hindi nagustuhan ng leaders yung suot mo, babatingin ka nila, hindi tama yung suot mo. Pag nagustu hindi nagustuhan ng ibang leader yung kulay ng buhok mo, magbago ka ng kulay ng buhok mo. Pag buhok pinapansin, damit pinapansin, pero bunga walang pumapansin. We are more concerned. Now, I, I believe in dressing appropriately, amen, that the colors of your hair will be appropriate as well. Hindi ka naman mag-gagown pag nagsiswimming, right? Appropriate lang. Hindi ka magsisimba naman siyempre na naka-short, naka-sando, tsaka 
Nakabating suit. Right? Bakit? I believe in appro- appropriate and dress modestly. But if you, if you have the appearance, but you don't have fruit, that faith is questionable, isn't it? It's not the building. It's not the membership. It's not the multiple service, not the budget, now the, not the excellence of service. It's the fruit. Now, God wants excellence. Ang sabi ng Daniel chapter 6, Daniel distinguished himself. Sa ibang translation, David proven himself to be more capable than the rest. He's an excellent guy. Amen. God wants an excellent spirit. God wants efficiency. But God also wants fruit. It is a command, church. Come on, sabi mo sa katami mo, God wants you to have the fruit. Now, in case you don't know, inform ko lang, family talk, five minutes. Family talk, five minutes. Ang yun dito sa church, by the grace of God, we have four full-time staff and three part-time staff. By the grace of God. Palapakan nyo naman to. Ang Panginoon. Now, the, 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 the amazing thing is this. These seven people that we have on our staff, may mga college degree. Pero ginibap nila ang lahat ng yun to serve the Lord. And I'm so blessed with the current staff that we have. I can tell you, they have great work ethics, they have discipline, they are, they are willing to stay late and do more than what is required. They have discipline, yes, but it doesn't mean I'm not gonna fire them. Kasi ang nakagawian natin, porki nasa church, spiritual, intindihin nyo na, no. We have staff, this year lang nagsimula ito eh, because of your generosity. Because of your generosity, in partnership, in pledges, we were able to give allowances sa mga full-time staff natin. You are generous. And I can assume na binibigay nyo yan over and above your tithes. It is a hard-earned money pinaghirapan nyo eh. At dahil pinaghirapan mo, hindi naman ako papayag na ipapasweldo mo siya sa tamad na empleyado, right? It is an investment to advance the kingdom of God. Am I making sense or, or not? Ibig sabihin, your partnership made this possible. Your generosity made this possible. Your generosity makes our ministries possible. Your generosity helped us fulfill the mission na punoyin natin ng langit. You are generous and I want to personally thank you for your generosity. To our online family, thank you for your generosity. All of you guys, we thank you for your generosity. God, by the grace of God, we were able to minister even outside the four walls of our church. All for the glory of God. The favor that God has in our church, I'm not saying it's big, but I'd like to say thank you sa mga small, small beginnings na binibigay ng Panginoon. That we were able to minister to at least 44,000 followers on Facebook every single weekend. Sa two months na pag exist ng YouTube channel natin, we have 2,300 subscribers already. By the grace of God. Now, it's not, it's not huge sa inyo, but, ah, two, three, ah, 44,000 is nothing. Five million kasi ko eh. Okay, ikaw na. Right? But, but that's not the point. That's not the point. We have a member of 600 people and we were able to minister to 2,300 at least subscribers on YouTube and 44,000 followers and more than 100 every single, every single live stream that we have. Amen? It's amazing. The videos that we have can reach 2.2 million, hundreds of thousands of views by the grace of God. It is a favor that God is giving us, amen, that we should be very, very, should I say, a good steward, faithful steward of the great things. In fact, I hear a story na merong mga, may isang OFW na he, she, she considered na parte siya ng pamilya natin. Na nung umuwi siya, taga Mindanao siya, nung umuwi siya sa Pilipinas, nagstay pa siya ng isang araw, nagbook ng hotel para makati ng service natin. Because he wants to express na I'm not just your digital family, that I am part of this family. In other words, the church is much bigger than this building. You know why it happened? Because of your partnership. Because of your pledges. Amen? Because of your generosity. That you submitted yourself to the authority of the leadership of this church. That you submitted to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. You, you submitted to the green light. That when God says give, you give. Amen? Amen? Yeah. You are generous. Amen? That's why these things happen na hindi natin pinipili yung sarili nating desire, we want to submit. Submission is very important. 
that we submit that every single step na meron dito si church ito, we submit to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Of course, we plan. We plan ahead. But we have to submit to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Na bawat isa po sa atin bilang nana, you submit sa Holy Spirit. Bawat tata, you submit to the Holy Spirit. Bawat young adult, we submit to the Holy Bawat young people, we submit. Amen? And the thing that I know about submission, madaling mag-submit pag gusto mo yung pinapagawa. Try nyo sa bahay. Pag yung nanay may pinapagawa sa anak at yung anak gustong-gusto niya ipapagawa, anak, mag-enjoy ka muna. Mag-mobile legends ka. Saglit lang to. Pasayahin mo naman ang sarili mo. Of course, nai. I will submit to you. If it's your will, let it be done. Madaling sabihin sa Panginoon, Lord, I want to submit. Yeah. Ang sabi ng Panginoon sa atin, rest. Come to me. All of you who are heavy laden. Of course, Lord. Who am I? The church is my bank full of me. I will rest in your presence. Sabi ng Lord, cast all your cares. Of course, Lord. I'm willing to do that. I want to submit to you. I will cast all my cares. Sabi ng Lord, patawarin mo na yung kaaway ko. No, Lord. Huwag mo madaliin. Dahan-dahan lang. Sabi ng Lord, mahalin mo yung kaaway mo. No, Lord. You don't understand. It's a difficult thing to do. It's not easy to do that, Lord. You must know. All-knowing ka po, di ba? You know it. Why? Madaling mag-submit pag gusto mo. But we don't submit because we want it. We submit because we need it. Pinapatulog kami ng tanghali before, not because we want it. Kung gusto lang namin masusunod, wala talaga. But we have to submit because we need it. And I thank the Lord for the leaders of this church. Karamihan sa kanila sa umagang service umaatin, but sana makarating ito sa kanila that we are grateful for their sacrifices and counsel, for their guidance and wisdom, that because of their leadership, amen, we are walking in favor because we walk in their counsel, that we trust the wisdom of God in their life, because we submitted ourselves, that when God says, green light, you move forward. Ang mali kasi natin, nakastop, gumugo ka. Pag nakago, umi-stop ka. Don't say no when God says go. Pag sinabi ng Panginoon sa iyo, go ahead. You do it for the glory of God. Why? Because you trust and submit to the Holy Spirit. And sabi ng Lord, alam mo may prompting na sa iyo matagal na mag-serve ka sa ministry. Lord, tsaka na. And you know what? After the service, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you after the service. I, want, I know God is prompting you sa mga nakara, nakalipas pang linggo na gusto ng Lord, alam mong gusto ng Lord na mag-serve ka sa Kanya but you don't know where to start. I mean, you don't know what ministries na pwede mong pasukan. Am I, am I making sense? That's why we have this what we call ministry placement form. Kung saan ilalagay mo lang yung tingin mong gift na ipinagkaloob sa inang Panginoon and we will recommend a ministry na pwede mong pasukan. Amen? Hindi ka namin ipipili sa worship team kung sintunado ka talaga. Don't, don't worry because we want the church to exist for, for many more years by the grace of God. So, so we don't want na, ma, alam nyo, hindi sila makakonect sa Diyos. Um, alam kong gusto mong pagkanta pero ayaw sa'yo ng pagkanta, my friend. So trust the Holy Spirit. Submit to the... Tayo, may na-offend pa. May na-offend pa. Yun na kasi mangot sa'yo yun. Malamang. Amen? Because we want to submit to the Holy Spirit. You know God is asking you to support. God is asking you. You know there is a prompting in your heart. Give to somebody. Support this ministry. Amen? Give to this uh, young man or give to this poor guy. God is prompting you to help somebody. God is prompting you na, na abutin yung ibang tao. I-share ang gospel. God is prompting you na, na tumulong sa church, na mag-support sa ministry and all that. I know God is prompting you to do it. And we will, at the best of our ability, want to help you. Amen? Na mapagamit tayo lahat sa ating Panginoon. Because yes, yes, God wants you to serve Him. Yes, God wants you to sign up for a link-up group. Yes, God wants you to sign up for a home Bible study near you. God wants you to mature in your faith, to grow in your faith. You don't want this preaching, but, but I will preach it anyway. God wants you to grow. God wants you to mature. And you know, there is a green signal, there is a green light in front of you that says, Go ahead, you give, you move forward, you grow, you mature. You know it. Alam mo, Pastor, nagaantay pa ako. I'm waiting kung anong ministry. Pastor, I'm waiting for the right time. Pastor, I'm waiting for the right season. Ito pinaka-epic. Pastor, I'm waiting for the move of God. 
No, God waits for you to move. Nagantay ka sa move of God, sabi ng Lord, kanina pa kita inaantay. Last year pa. Move. How long will you mourn? Green light, go. Fill your flask with oil. Go to the house of Jesse, for I have provided myself a king. Pastor, I'm waiting for the right time. Pastor, I'm waiting for the right season. Pastor, I'm waiting for the right... Me- no, you're not waiting, you're hiding. Big difference. Stop hiding. Amen? Amen? Be faithful. Be faithful stewards of the good things that God has placed in your heart. Amen? Submit to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. I have an exciting news for you before I close. Pang ilang close ko na to? Dalawa, tatlo. Pangalawa. I have a very exciting news to all of you. Amen. I believe that God wants us, God wants to take this church to the to a higher level. Do you agree? Literally. Higher level. Right? Okay. As I've said, unless, the, unless God says otherwise, we will go on and move forward because we want to submit to Him. Amen? God wants to bring your family to a higher level, to a higher level of commitment, to a higher level of excellence, to a higher level of giving, to a higher level of your commitment, maturity, growth, faith, trust in God. Gusto nang just i-level up natin eh. And I'm here to challenge you. Marami akong message na pwedeng i-preach sa'yo, makakapagpasigaw sa inyo, na makakapagpalubag ng loob nyo, but I believe we all need this. We all need to be reminded that we have a purpose to bless somebody that you are blessed to be a blessing to somebody, that you got that wisdom to bless others, that you got that resources to bless other people, that you got that gift because God wants you to, 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 God wants you to be used sa buhay ng ibang tao. And I'm so excited to announce to you, mga kapatid, that God will challenge this church once again. We have obviously accumulated some funds na pwede natin magamit sa paglipat natin, but you know, you know it. Yung paglilipatan natin is three, five, three to five times na mas malaki compared dito. And uh, what we have right now is not enough. And we need people with a heart for giving because pagpasok ko ng December 15, 22, and 29, for the first time in our church history, this is not an expansion offering, for the first time in our church history, kasamang online friends natin, all of us, of all ages, if you consider Gia Kamanaba as your family, we want to open an opportunity for you to support the ministry. We call it Generosity Sundays. Starting December 15, Generosity Sunday. December 22, Generosity Sunday. December 29, Generosity. All these three Sundays will be given an opportunity for us to give over and above our tithes and offering. Because we wanted to further the vision that God has for us. We want to advance the kingdom of God. Hindi natin to, hindi tayo mag offering para mabayaran yung pangkuryente natin. We have that. Para hindi tayo maputulan ng tubig. No, we have, pa, meron tayong pambayad for that. But we are raising funds to further the vision. We want to accelerate the vision that God has for our church. That's why this Generosity Sundays, I'm challenging all of you. It's not compulsory, but challenging each one of you. Amen? That as you go here, amen, come with an expectation that as we bring this over and above offering natin sa ating Panginoon, that we will give generously to advance the kingdom of God. We are believing for breakthroughs, for miracle, amen, for supernatural things that will happen in our life. Maybe for some of you, Pastor, parang hindi naman totoo, parang hindi naman mangyayari sa aking buhay. Yeah, but, but, but I want to challenge you, mga kapatid, the word of God is true. Na kung may prompting ang Holy Spirit sa you, you submit to it. If the Holy Spirit says, wag ka magbigay, then don't give. But if the Holy Spirit says, you give, you give. Just submit, just like David. Naging faithful siya sa pag-aalaga ng tupa ng kanyang tatay. He submitted to his father. Si Elisha, naging faithful siya sa pag-aararo ng lupa ng kanyang mga magulang. He submitted to his parents. Si Joshua, ginamit ng Panginoon para itawid ang Israelites to the promised land. He has a gift, he has a talent, pero nung hindi pa siya ang leader, nag-submit siya sa authority ni Moses. He submitted to the authority of Moses. And I believe all of us are called by God to submit to the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I want to challenge you to sign up 
to serve, be faithful, and be involved in these Generosity Sundays. December 15, 22, and 29. We will be challenged like never before. Amen. We will have this big project that we've never had in our church before. And I believe with the community that we have, with the family that we have that are generous, hallelujah, praise God. Willing to sacrifice for the glory of God. Hindi man pare-pareho ang amount na ibibigay natin, pero alam kong pare-pareho tayong may sacrifices na ibibigay at i-invest so that the purpose of God in this church will accomplish for the glory of God. And now as we bring to our regular tithes and offering and pledges, I want to encourage you once again to bring and submit to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, kung wala ko kayong tiwala sa leadership ng church na ito to manage these finances, we don't force you to give. But if the Holy Spirit is prompting you, amen, to test Him and bring your tithes, ang pangako ng Lord God will open up what? The, 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 what, what? the windows of heaven and pour out the blessing in our life. Do you want to experience that? Actually, ang contacts ng Malakay 3, panahon ng tagutom nung sabihin ng Panginoon, bring your tithes into the storehouse. Panahon ng kasalatan, bring your tithes into the storehouse. God wants to test their, their, their obedience. God wants to test their submission. Pero ang sabi ng Panginoon, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out. That's a blessing. Pero meron pa isang blessing eh. That I will, ang sabi ng Lord, I will rebuke the devourer. Lahat ng humahad lang sa blessing nyo, haharangan ko. I will rebuke it. Kasi agriculturally speaking, hindi ako farmer, pero agriculturally speaking, kahit na magaling ka magtanim, kahit na ikaw ay masipag magtanim, umaasa ka pa rin na faithful ang Diyos na magpapatubo ng lahat ng iyong tinanim. Right? Yung pinsan ko sa, sa probinsya, meron siyang palaisdaan, nananalangin pa rin siya sa Panginoon na huwag bumagyo para hindi umapaw yung palaisdaan niya. Umaasa pa rin siya sa faithfulness ng Diyos na poprotektan at iingatan yung kanyang, yung kanyang inaalagaan. Right? Kahit gano'n siya kasipag, kahit gano'n siya ka-dedicated, umaasa pa rin siya sa Diyos na magpoprotekta sa kanyang mga arian. Pero minsan, di maiiwasan eh. Naging faithful ka, pero nagkaroon pa rin ng peste. Nag, na, naging faithful ka, pero, pero, bumagyo pa din eh. And nawala ang lahat. And ang usual reasoning natin, ah, siguro, inalaw talaga ng Panginoon kasi, biruin mo oh. Nagsipag naman ako, kaso bumagyo eh. Ano magagawa ko? Wala akong mapapakinabangan. Eh wala eh, peneste eh. Wala akong mapapakinabangan. Pero ang sabi ng Bible, di ba, I will rebuke. I will rebuke. Kung weather ang problema, teka lang, sino pa may control ng weather? Kung peste, kung locust, at that time, locust ang problema, sino pang may control sa locust? Baka ngayon locust nagpapaalam pa sa Diyos, Lord, kikilos sa ba kami? Because He's control of everything. Amen? And naturally speaking, it's hard, it's difficult, it doesn't make sense. Why do we, well, we keep on doing this generosity Sundays anyway? It doesn't make sense, right? But supernaturally, God is opening up a door for you to experience His generosity. Ayoko okay, ipagdamo sa inyo yung opportunity na yun eh. Amen? Amen? Because I want you to experience And as we bring our tithes and offering, may you be blessed, may the good Lord open up the windows of heaven and rebuke the devourer for your sake. Father, we thank you for this very wonderful time that we have. Hello, it's me again, Pastor Stephen. In case you're wondering, paano nga ba ako, Pastor, makakasupport with this ministry? Well, first of all, I would like to ask you to pray for us. Your prayer for this ministry can go a long way. But if you want to support this ministry financially, you can send your donations through our website, www.gscmnb.com, and click on that Give button. Well, thank you so much for watching this video again and we hope that this video has been a blessing to you. And since nandito na rin lang po kayo, why don't you hit that share button and let your friends experience what you have experienced. Marami pa pong videos sa channel na ito that you may want to check out. We hope to see you again in our next videos. God bless you. Punoyin natin ang langit and let us fight for our family.